you, sir. First name, Mr. Last name, Class. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. This is just going to be my re my reaction to the early reviews that have been coming out regarding M. Night Shyamalan's uh, third entry in the East Rail 177 trilogy, Glass. Glass is supposed to be combining the two films that uh, last, not last year, but 2017 psychological horror thriller Split with James McAvoy at the center and then 2000s Unbreakable with uh, Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson as the uh, two focus characters but with bruce willis's character david dunn as the main focus of that story uh so glass was supposed to be combining and uniting the two universes i am going to see this when it comes out because i've uh i haven't been waiting for an unbreakable sequel i honestly didn't think unbreakable needed a sequel uh i don't mind that it's getting one i was just blown away by how m night Shyamalan kind of just threw that twist in at the end of uh split and i thought that was kind of clever of him to do that i would have been just fine if we had never gotten this movie but since we're getting it, i am going to check it out because i i don't mind that they're doing a sequel to unbreakable even though i felt that that's not i didn't think unbreakable needed a sequel uh but since since it's happened since it's happening since it's already happened since it's set to be released i am going to see it i've been planning to see it for quite a while since it's been announced because i did love unbreakable so much growing up I am a big fan of Split. I would like to say that I enjoy Split more because it is in that horror genre and I love horror movies. Uh, sadly though, it seems that Glass is getting a bunch of negative reviews for the most part. Not mixed to negative. In the past with Split and Unbreakable, it was mixed to positive. But with this, it seems like it's mixed to negative. Uh, there are a few positives out there and I've, I've read pretty much all the reviews I can take. I've read around 20 different reviews uh on rotten tomatoes right now it's sitting at about 40 percent it has like 29 or 30 reviews on the board as of as of today or as of this recording as of i last checked it i would like to think that this movie is going to do just fine in my opinion i think what i've noticed in the trend with the critics that i've that i've read because i do think critics have more value than what people give them credit for because a lot of people i've i've made this clear in my other videos people will say that the critics do not know what they're talking about, but then they will turn around and they'll praise or they'll disown a movie left and right and tell you why, they won't tell you why it was good or bad, but they can simply just tell you why it, they can simply just say it's good or it's bad. And what I appreciate about a critic is that they are able to take elements from the film and back up what they're saying. And then you are allowed then to see what this person said. And now you can watch it for yourself and say, okay, I see what they're talking about there. Maybe maybe this works for me, maybe this doesn't. I see why it didn't work for them, but it works for me. Whereas other people will say a movie is good or a movie is bad. They have no idea why it was good or bad because they don't care about the components of filmmaking. They're not paying attention to the cinematography. They're not paying attention to the direction, the acting, the storytelling, the plot holes, uh, the character development. They're not paying attention to any of that. They'll turn around and say the critics don't know what they're talking about, but at the end of the day, they're the ones that don't know what they are talking about because they are not able to back up their opinions on a film. Uh, so most of the reviews that have been coming out have been mixed to negative. I've seen people talking about how the film takes place entirely in that asylum that's featured in the trailer, and I guess that's kind of a detractor for it. I've seen others talking about the twist not being kind of on the people it'll leave people on on either one side of the fence will either be for it or against it uh and then i've seen others talking about how m night shows no signs of having any knowledge of comic books uh and he basically every chance he gets the dialogue in the movie is just beating beating the uh audience over the head trying to explain everything versus letting them figure it out for themselves now what i have to say to that that last part that i mentioned about the dialogue keep in mind that these movies are supposed to be grounded in realism in a universe where it's asking the question not not if these people exist or it's asking the question rather can these people really exist uh, and I think I think that's there's no problem with that bleeding into glass Yes, we know it exists. We know they exist because we've already seen Split and we've seen Unbreakable. But taking that taking that piece that made those two films so strong, I don't think that's necessarily going to be a hindrance to the film. I think 
what a lot of critics are getting at is the fact that it's probably used a little bit too much. That's probably what's setting a lot of, a lot of them off. The dialogue in the movie is kind of beating them over the head. I've read some things about the dialogue constantly explaining how comic book battles work and explaining showdowns, climaxes, arch villains, heroes, this and that. And basically people saying that it's, this film, it's not that it's a poorly made film, it's just that a movie that's come too late because we've gotten all these superhero movies over, over the past couple of years and it feels like M. Night Shyamalan is unaware of that. Uh, but I like to keep, I want everyone to keep in mind that just because we've had all these superhero movies come out in our world, this is our world, that doesn't mean that the movie's world has to actually be a realistic, overly realistic reflection of our own. So, yes, we have the Incredible Hulk, we have the Marvel, we have the DCs, we have all those movies, we have this countless Spider-Man movies, Batman, uh, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, we have all that stuff that's been coming out and is set to come out this year and in the future. That doesn't mean that the universe presented in glass, unbreakable, and split has to be grounded in the same realistic matter that we are in. Uh, those films might not exist in that world, and that's perfectly fine. You can't always take our frame and project it onto the movie. Now, with that being said, I'm not saying that superhero movies don't exist in that world, but probably not as much as they do in ours. That's perfectly fine. It's not unrealistic for the dialogue to constantly be telling you how a showdown works between villains, especially if in this world, superhero films and all this other stuff isn't common for them. Perhaps it's not common for them the way it is for us in the real world. That's perfectly fine. Uh, so I don't think that's really the issue. The issue I could see myself having is if, in fact, they are constantly just carrying the audience with their they're constantly holding the audience's hand and explaining everything to them as if the audience is brain dead buffoons. I can see why that is a problem because yes, you still need to keep in mind that we have all these other superhero movies. So to a degree, I can see why it would be a problem. But at the same time, you have to keep in mind that our world and just because these movies exist in our world doesn't mean they necessarily exist in this film's world. And also this movie does not take place in 2019. Glass is set 15 years after Unbreakable. That's already been made clear by Shyamalan himself. Uh, I think it's set in 2015 at the latest and it's taking place three weeks after Split, not three years. I've seen reviews saying it takes place three years. That's not correct. It's taking place three weeks. Uh, getting into other things, I've seen people complain about or critics getting on it for the fact that there's a moment where the film is building up to a finale that ultimately is a big tease and it never comes. Uh, that can be an issue because I, if you're familiar with the Friday series, that's kind of what next Friday was F next Friday spent most of its time building up towards, uh, a rematch between Debo and Ice Cube's character. And then in the end, when it's about to go down, the cops just show up and Debo is sent back to the big house. So that's kind of, if that's what they're getting at, then I can see, yes, how that's a little bit ridiculous and kind of just teasing your audience for the sake of teasing them when you know you can't afford to shoot a sequence like that. Uh, and then another thing that I've been hearing about is the fact that it takes place in that asylum. Now, complaining about it taking place in the asylum, I don't see what the problem is there. I Again, we need to all see the movie for ourselves, but it feels like from what I've read, most of these reviews are just bitter and they're just being way too harsh on the movie because it didn't live up to the things they wanted it to be or it didn't do certain things that it wanted it to do. Now, that's not the movie's fault. That's that's your own fault because you're the one who set those expectations. When I watch movies, I don't always have my expectations met. And yes, I am let down when movies don't meet certain expectations that I had for them. But that's not that's not the movie's fault. That's my fault because I project I formed these thoughts based off of the trailers, based off what I was hearing. So that's on me because I'm the one who shaped my mindset like that. That's not necessarily a detraction from the movie. I've been disappointed by a lot of movies that in the end still ended up being well-made films and they were around seven and a half to eights to 8.5s out of 10s for me. They're, they just let me down in the sense that it wasn't what, what I expected it to be. And I see that that's basically what's coming out about Glass, but it seems like that's causing critics to be rather harsh on the topic because I'm seeing the same thing. People are 
It seems that also they wanted these characters to progress in the most unrealistic way possible. Um, I've seen people complaining about how Kevin Dunn or David Dunn rather is still in Philadelphia after all these years. He hasn't been traveling, saving other people. Why should he do that? Again, this is set. This is grounded in being more realistic. He's not he's not he doesn't have the powers that these over exaggerated characters do. So it's not I don't see what's unrealistic about him still being in Philadelphia. That's my opinion. The char the powers we see him presented with in Unbreakable, they don't they don't lead to me expecting this man to travel around the world and extend his power to a lot of people, especially considering the fact that most of his powers aren't these over exaggerated powers that we see in the Avengers films, in the Spider-Man films, in the Hulk films, and the other superhero movies that with the characters that have exaggerated powers. None of that stuff, none of his powers call for him to travel around the world like that especially considering the fact that in unbreakable he himself wanted to keep wanted to keep it a secret so progressing 15 years later it's nice to see that that's still how he wants it he doesn't want to be he doesn't want to be in the spotlight he wants to still be seen as an individual as a regular individual because at the end of this he kind of still is because his powers aren't really that over exaggerated and they're not that over the top uh I don't see the need for why he would be traveling around the world. Uh, but getting back to the asylum, the movie's trailer literally highlights this asylum so many times. And with the runtime, you have to like set realistic expectations going into superhero movies because because most superhero movies that come out now they do get bad reviews, bad to mixed reviews. Rare, rarely do I see a superhero movie get any positive reviews unless it's an Avengers movie or something around that sort but to say to be surprised that most of the movie took place in an asylum when it's showcased in the, in the trailer so much and it's it's a big set piece in the trailer and with the runtime we know it's over two hours so i don't i don't really get why that was so surprising to a lot of people i was expecting it to take place in the asylum so if it didn't take place in the asylum for most of the runtime like i thought it would that would have been a a big shock to me now yes shock value is always always well welcomed in movies but with the way the trailer was set up i was expecting it to be a slow paced film which is what critics are saying it is it's rather slow paced it's picking up three weeks after split uh the opening resembles what we love about unbreakable or if you're a fan of unbreakable you'll get a little bit of that but then after that, apparently it goes downhill because it takes place in the asylum and then it teases a big finale that never ends up happening. And then the dialogue and it is constantly beating you over the head about how showdowns work in comic books and stuff. And again, that doesn't those don't sound like detractors to me. Those sound like the tease with the battle. That sounds like a detractor to me because that sounds like something that you could have handled better in Night Shyamalan. But as far as like beating the beating the audience over the head as far as like how comic books work i don't think it's necessarily say that they're dumbing down the audience i think what the issue would be is that they're probably doing it a bit too much but to sit down and explain how comic books work on every level i don't think that's unrealistic because like i made like i made mention of earlier you can't just assume that because we and our world have these countless superhero movies now that's not to say that they actually exist in the world of unbreakable glass or split these characters probably don't exist we, i've never really if i'm recalling correctly i don't think unbreakable or split make any real mention of major superhero names so perhaps they don't exist in that world that's probably also something that you need to consider when watching glass just because these movies exist in our world don't mean that they exist in this new movie or in this universe per se those are just my thoughts on glass and the early reactions that have been coming out about it i am going to see it next friday what, I, what do I think the movie is going to be for me? I think it's going to be a 6.5 to a 7. I gave Unbreakable a 7.5 and, and I gave Split a 7.5. I enjoy Split more because it's in the horror genre. Those are just my thoughts on it. I think Glass is going to fall in the middle. I don't think it's going to be as good as both uh, Unbreakable or Split. I think it's going to be either a 6.5 to a 7. And those aren't bad ratings. Uh, a 6.5 is a pass for me six and up is a pass it's just that if i'm if i'm giving you a six and a half that means you 
kind of fumbled towards the ending. That's what happened. You either fumbled towards the ending, you probably left too much things unanswered, or something else happened that Johnny just threw me off. That's just my opinion. Uh, if you've seen Glass, don't spoil it in the comment section, but kind of just give brief thoughts on what you thought about the movie. Uh, if I see spoilers, I am going to delete your comment. Uh, but if you guys enjoy my video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe or turn on post notifications. In the description, I have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know what movies you'd like me to review in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.